um, I was just recording a video about uh, Pywall actually, and I kept doing this weird thing uh, that's only a feature in Awesome Window Manager and annoys the hell out of me. Whenever you scroll the wheel anywhere on the screen, it's perfectly normal, but there's this feature built in where if you're not on a window and you accidentally hit the scroll wheel, it flips through the different desktops. And I can imagine this being sort of a handy feature for people, but I end up just accidentally bumping it all the time. And uh, so I was thinking there's like, there's a lot of these little small tweaks and things that I'd like to make to my uh, configs and I just haven't gotten around to doing it. Uh, you know, here's another one, for example. If I'm uh, in Spotify and I'm playing a song, it sends a notification, which is cool, but it's this humongous notification, like way bigger than it has any reason to be. And it pops up every time I uh, play a song, every time it goes to a new song. And so, I, I don't know, there's a lot of these little things. I've got like multimedia keys on my keyboard and they don't work in Arch Linux by default. And I know I can get them working because every time I use XFCE or any other type of thing they work automatically perfectly fine uh so let's uh let's do that first thing i want to do is uh let's just talk about that awesome window manager stuff so let's go into my config here for awesome and go ahead and try to figure out how to fix this uh how would i search this awesome window manager rolling mouse wheel tag changer okay here we go uh check your rc lua for root dash buttons oh wait no this is it right here awesome if i use button four button five which is the scroll wheel up and down it's going to view next or view previous for the tag cool so let's see here i'm going to search for root dot buttons and there it is right there uh and so it looks like what i want to get rid of are just these two down here awful tag view next and view previous and then let's save, reload. Oh, I got an error. Uh, unexpected symbol near, oh, you know what? I know exactly what it is. That's that comma at the end. I've had problems there. You end statements with a comma, but then the last one in the list, you don't need the comma. And if you have it there, it will break things. Let's reload again, open up a couple of windows. There it is, mouse wheel no longer switching. Okay, cool. So now let's take a look at the notification thing. Um, huge notifications, awesome window manager. This is the actual awesome window manager config page here. Right, let's just search for width. Oh, here we go. Icon size, beautiful notification icon size. Let's give that a shot. And uh, I don't know if this is measured in pixels or what. Uh, I know we can probably just drop it right down here with like the useless gap settings. Uh, and then we'll do equals and let's set it to, I don't know, maybe 20 or something. Maybe it uses the, I don't, I have no idea how to set this. So let's reload, open up Spotify and let's play a song. Oh, hey, that's quite a bit small. Or maybe let's try something else. Maybe let's try about 100. Skip to the next song. That's a little more reasonable. Um, maybe just a tiny bit smaller. Maybe we'll do like uh, 80 or something. I think that'll work out okay. That's just about perfect. I think that's a good notification size. Okay, there we go. Next thing up. Oh, you know what? Actually, also, I had a uh, comment that someone asked me about, and I, I actually know probably the answer here. Let's see here. Uh, chaotic sys. I don't know. Although I have the default config installed, I have no tray icons. Okay, so this is in reference to Polybar. What I think you probably need to do is come down and look at the tray settings here. Um, there is a built-in tray in Polybar. You just have to add this to your config. I don't know if it's in the default or not, uh, but if you don't have these tray options, you can just copy and paste them in or type them in or whatever. Uh, and that should get you a tray. If that doesn't, leave another comment. We'll try to get back to it. And then the other thing, I actually have the same problem. They said they set the useless gap to zero but there's always a small gap in between the windows and the polybar. That's true. It's because Awesome Window Manager, I'm assuming you're also using Awesome, I don't know for sure, it's probably true in other window managers, has a border set in. Um, so if we go and look for the border settings, uh, by default, what this is gonna look like is something like that. Uh, what you need to do is add this line up here to the top, border width equals zero. And that should completely get rid of the border in Awesome Window Manager by default. And then uh, I have the same problem, like whenever you make anything full screen, there'd be a, like a tiny one pixel border on the edge. There'd be like a one pixel border in between the poly bar and everything else. Uh, anyways, hope that helps. Other thing I wanted to do, I wanted to add a keyboard shortcut to change wallpapers. Um, so I'm gonna go back into my awesome config and let's go to where I have Firefox set up. And I'm just gonna copy this whole keyboard shortcut that I made, paste that in. Okay, and I'm gonna change this to Fay, and I'm gonna say, uh, I want this to change wallpaper and we'll give it a new keyboard shortcut we're gonna do mod key and i think c wasn't set to anything else is what i found out okay cool mod key c and then what we need to do is just run a script 
in here or not a script, just an app. So I'm going to do fay dash dash um, bg fill dash dash uh, resize or what is it? Randomize and then add the directory. So I'm going to do media slash wallpapers slash maller. That should work in theory. Um, I, I'm not for sure. I don't know if I have to put it in an actual script or anything, but if I do mod key C now. Okay. Yeah, that's not working. I might have to put it in a script. Okay. So let's go into my scripts directory and oh, it looks like I already built a script. So that's handy. Uh, all you need to do is do that exact same command that I just typed. Uh, and then apparently I also have it refreshing, um, pulling down a pack list, a pack from Pac-Man and yay. Ooh. By the way, this is a teeling Irish whiskey that I'm drinking. It's pretty good. Um, and then once you have the script written, all you need to do is go into the scripts directory and then do chmod plus plus X and then the name of the script. And it's giving me an error because I already did it. But now if I'm going to go back into my config for awesome and then where I just set that thing up. We're just gonna change it to run a script instead. So we'll do slash home slash Mac. I do know if you're gonna run a script, you have to do it from the like full directory. You can't just do home directory slash, you have to do slash home slash your username slash, you know, exactly where it is. reload. Okay, so now if I run command C, boom, it changes the wallpaper every time I hit that thing. Now, speaking of changing the wallpaper, oh, actually, before we do that, multimedia keys. Um, I actually know how to do this. I just haven't done it. There's a little program here called Xbind keys. Uh, it's sort of basically the standard way to do it, and this should work for what we need to do. So um, if you don't have it, what you can do is pack-s xbind keys, that'll install it. Uh, and then also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the graphical app for it because I think that'll make it a little bit easier to set up a configuration file. Um, so what you need to do is install this thing here, xbind keys config gtk2. It is in the AUR, so I'm gonna do pack or yay-s, install that. And there we go. So uh, now what we have here is I've got basically six multimedia keys I wanna do here. I've got a volume up, a volume down, a mute, and then I've got a skip. Uh, forward, skip back, and uh, play pause. Sort of standard, I'm using this uh, DOS keyboard here, brown switches, it's pretty nice. I'd like to build my own keyboard at some point, but in the meantime, this will do. Um, and conveniently enough, right here on the ArchWiki page for Xbind keys, it tells you how to do a good bit of this. Uh, so this right here, pack, tl, set sync volume, is how you increase volume, this command here is how you decrease volume, and this command here is how you mute the volume. So let's actually just go ahead and do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and open up xbind keys uh, config, and this is a nice little graphical app. Uh, what we can do, I guess, is make a new shortcut. Uh, it wants a name. I'm going to call this, uh, what we're we doing here, we're going to do volume up first. So we'll call this one volume up, and then it's going to ask me to get the key and then crash, apparently. That does not inspire confidence. Oh, I think I figured out what the problem was. We have to make this config probably before we can run the um, GUI app. So let's uh, go ahead and touch right here in our home directory. We're going to create a new file, xbind key src. And then let's try and run that uh, GUI app one more time and see if that works. New, get key. Awesome. So we'll do function volume up. And you can see right here, it puts in the code that we need. Uh, then we're going to call this volume up. It was a stupid issue. But uh, hey, we fixed it now. So the volume up command is this right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in that command and we can run the action and see what happens. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply. Uh, I went ahead and just saved us some time here. These are all the different keyboard shortcuts. We've got a mute, a volume up, and a volume down. Uh, the one weird thing here is for the previous play, pause, and next. So I actually wanted this to just control Spotify. That way if I'm, you know, a lot of times the reason I would wanna like play or pause or something is because I've, I've got two things playing at one time. So I want this to just control Spotify. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna use an app called uh, Spotify uh, CLI. This is a great little command line tool that controls Spotify for you. Uh, it's sort of weird in, it has a pro and a con. Uh, the con being that the desktop Spotify app has to be open uh, for you to use it. Uh, the, the pro being that uh, you don't actually have to do any configuration to get this installed. In order to install this, all you need is the Python pip uh, package manager. So you can install that on Arch. I think it's um, pacman-s and then it's Python. Actually, I'm gonna have to look. Python 
pip or something like that. Oh yeah, that's it right there. It's pack-s python pip. And then you also have to install pack-s python dbus, I think. Yeah. And then what you can do is right over here on the page using the uh, Python package manager pip install Spotify CLI Linux. Pretty easy. Install Python Spotify CLI Linux. Uh, so then Spotify CLI, when you run that with the dash dash help command, it will tell you all of the things that you can throw in there. So you can play, pause, play, pause, which will just toggle between the two and then next and previous. Uh, so that's exactly what I've put into the xbind keys uh, deal over here. Uh, in theory, if we hit save, apply and X, uh, we should now be able to, yeah, that's playing and pausing and now we're skipping songs. Um, in order to make this permanent, uh, what they recommend, the way that you activate it is you run the xbind keys command um, now, in order to make it work on restart, what they recommend is that you put it into your um, the Xnet RC or whatever it is, and you can put it there. And you see, I have. Uh, but what I'm going to do is make this a little bit more permanent, and I'm just going to put it into my awesome config. So whenever we launch the shell, we're going to load X bind keys. Uh, the one other advantage to doing this that I can think of is it will, um, if you make any changes, just reloading your window manager will update them. So that should work out pretty well. Um, now a couple more things we want to do. I've been using the tryon git pycom fork for a little while now, but I want to try out uh, something a little bit different. So I'm going to go into uh, the one that I have my eye on here. I think it's called a uh, Jonaberg. Icom. I'm forgetting there's a lot of these and some of them absolutely will like wreck your machine um, so you want to make sure but as far as I can tell this seems to be a really full featured PyCom fork that uh, allows for like rounded corners, blurred animations and things, all sorts of cool stuff. A little more advanced than what I'm using now, uh, but should still be lightweight enough that it's not gonna like break our system or anything. As far as I can tell, it seems to be the best option. It's written in C, which I don't know much about programming languages, but uh, you know, that seems to be a good indicator to me when it's written in sort of a lower level language. Uh, I don't actually know if that makes any sense, but if you are on Arch Linux, installing things is super easy. So what we can do is yay dash ss and we're just going to search for PyCom and a whole bunch of different PyCom forks come up. Uh, this is the one I'm using now, PyCom tryon 144 git. Uh, what I want to grab is the PyCom Jonaberg git. Uh, so then I'm going to do yay dash s and install that. If it's like the other forks that I've used, it should ask me at some point if I want to replace the current version of PyCom that I'm using. Uh, yep, here we go right here. PyCom Jonaberg Git and PyCom Trion Git are in conflict. Do you want to remove PyCom Trion? Yes, I do. And then I believe we need our, a new configuration here. So let me find that real quick. PyCom sample config right there. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna grab the raw and what I'll do is I'm gonna CD into my config folder and I have a PyCom config in here. What I'm just gonna do is rename that one to uh, tryon, I'm probably not spelling that right, dot pycom.conf and then I will create a new pycom.conf and paste in all of the stuff that we just grabbed from the sample config. Maybe we'll reload here. Oh, you know what? I need to remove, I added a dot to the beginning of the name. So pycom.conf, move that to pycom. Dot conf. Okay, so a couple of things here. We should have rounded corners out of the box, it looks like, but it's, um, oh, a lot of these windows are etched out. So I'm just gonna delete all of the exceptions here. I'm gonna leave polybar. I don't want that to have rounded corners. Firefox can have them, everything else. So we'll save, reload, and nothing is happening again. Maybe we'll reload the window manager again. Nothing. Um, maybe let's kill PyCom and then reload the window manager. Oh, okay, there we go. Now I've got rounded corners. Okay, cool. So go back into the PyCom config and let's mess around. Um, the transition here, if we open up a new window, it should add like a nice little transition into it. That's cool. I don't know if I want to get rid of it, but I definitely don't want it to be the default length. So maybe we'll just divide it by a third. Yeah, you can barely see it there, but that's a little more like it. Uh, corners. I mean, we're paying for corners. We might as well add some corners. So let's go up to maybe 15 or something. Eh? Yeah, that's more like it. Round borders. No, I don't need to worry about that. Shadows. Yep. Shadows are off. Nice. I don't really want shadows. What else can we do here? Fading. Fade windows in when opening and closing. Yeah, I, I guess you can do that. I usually get turned that off at some point and I probably will, but for now you can stick to it. Um, the one thing I do want to do is I know in most PyComs there's a way to change uh, dim inactive windows and that's really helpful for me because I don't have borders or anything in my config. So maybe I'll just search for dimmed 
dim. Oh yeah, dim inactive windows. Um, and maybe we'll just dim it by like 0.2, I think is what I was using in the old one. So now if I open up a new window, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a difference. It's enough for me to tell since I've gotten used to it, but it's light enough that it's really not that big of a deal. It's doing something weird with the opacity for Spotify. Inactive opacity. Oh, here we go. Inactive opacity. I want to set that to one. I think that should fix. Yep. Okay. Now Spotify looks normal again. Awesome. Okay, cool. So I think that's pretty good start honestly i don't know i could spend a lot of time looking through the config but that's a little more interesting it kind of made my desktop look new so i'm pretty happy with that for now um so now let's talk about polybar been talking about polybar quite a bit recently but i have some ideas for some changes i want to make here and I, I have a pretty specific idea of what i want i want a way to launch a screenshot app uh, the one that i usually use is called flame shot i don't actually know if this will work but i've got three different wallpaper directories there's a weird story behind that but basically i've got these like first collection of wallpapers i did then some collections i pulled just for youtube and then some justin maller wallpapers three different directories i'd like i think that i should be able to make one icon on polybar and then and on right click, middle click, and left click, it will pull wallpapers from a different directory and change them. And then I want to add play, pause, and skip buttons to the window manager as well. So I've got my work cut out for me and I have a pretty good idea of how to do it. And I also actually already went into GU char map here and pulled down some icons that will work for what I want. If you don't know how to work, GU char map is a really cool app. Uh, basically all you want to do when you open it up is you go to view um, and you want to view by Unicode block and then what you want to do is scroll down until you get to the private use area and a lot of people tell you to like pick a font like the font awesome font or something like that and then go to view and click view only glyphs from this font and what this will do is just show you the icons that are available in this font um, I don't actually really use it that way I do view uh, and just show me all the glyphs this will show you basically every icon and every font uh, because if you right click on it and there's a font on your computer that has this icon it'll actually tell you exactly what font it is right here and uh, the first thing I need to do since I have already actually picked out icons I know what fonts I need here I think I only need to add one. So I have Product Sans as my main font. I have Font Awesome for some of these icons up here. And then I also have the weather icons, which I don't actually even use anymore. So I can delete that and I will replace it with a Source Code Pro Nerd Font. Uh, it's actually spelled Sauce Code Pro for some reason. And then I'm going to set the size. I don't know where to start with this. I think it's kind of a smaller font. So maybe we'll set it to like 16 or I should say, I think the icons are smaller. And then I'm gonna set this to zero. If you don't know how this works, basically the first item here is the font size. And then the second number here behind the semicolon is the um, position of it. So if I were to go to like this font awesome font, set it to 10 or something, you can see it shoves it way, way down. And it's a great way to get everything lined up on an even plane, like not all the fonts automatically align the correct way. So there we go. So let's go ahead and work on the, oh, first thing I want to do, I wanted to change this um, power menu thing to the Arch Linux icon. Uh, and I grabbed one here. Uh, so I'm going to copy that. And then I just want to come down to the power menu part of this. And right here where we have the label open, I'm just going to replace that with the Arch icon. And then we'll reload. And this is using the source code pro so we can sort of see what we want to do here. Um, let's go back up to the font. That'll give us a good chance to get it aligned. Let's make it a bit bigger. I'll try maybe, uh, um, yeah, that looks fine. And then we need to offset it a little bit. But we'll go to two, see how that looks. Uh, move it down a little bit more, maybe three or four. Is four too much? Yeah, I think four is too much. Maybe we'll do three. That'll be fine. So now we're actually going to build some new modules. Uh, so I'm going to do previous, play, and next. And then we can go ahead and build some new modules here. So I'm going to come above my uh, app tag switcher modules here. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do module. And I'm going to call it uh, previous. Let's do uh, Ezek equals echo and we'll go ahead and echo out an icon this is the previous icon so we'll grab this sort of deal there and then we'll go ahead and say click left is going to run the command and we're actually going to use that same spotify cli app and i'm just going to say previous 
Go ahead and save, and nothing happened. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do the most important thing. Type equals custom script. I didn't actually know that would prevent it from showing up. Let's give it a shot. Hey, there we go. Okay, cool. So now we can make a couple copies here. Okay, and then we're gonna call this one play, and we're gonna change the command to play pause, and we're also gonna change the icon, and then one more copy, and this one's gonna say next. Change that to next and change the icon one more time. Go ahead and save and nothing is showing up for some reason. That's fun. Okay, there we go. There it is. Cool. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Let me drag Spotify over here and we're just gonna skip, 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 skip forward. Hit pause, there we go. And uh, one other thing I wanted to do is I'm gonna kill Spotify here. And on the play pause, I wanted to add another thing. I wanted to add click right equals Spotify and. And what that should do is give us a quick way if we don't have the Spotify app launched to go ahead and launch it. There we go, very nice. So next up, I'm actually really kind of liking the way that these forward and next arrows look. I didn't know they were gonna be so big, but they kind of look cool on the uh, deal here. I've got an idea. Let me, um, I'm gonna make a copy of this and I'm gonna slightly tweak my, um, Move that over like five spaces or something and then I'll copy that one. I don't know if this is going to look completely retarded, but uh, that's kind of an interesting look. I don't know if this is going to stick around. This seems a little overly complicated for my taste, but uh, looks cool for now. So then we just need to build two more little modules here. Uh, I'm going to put them both right over here, right in front of the update. So I don't know what to call these here. We'll call one shot for screenshot and then we'll call another one maybe wallpaper. That seems pretty no nonsense. Come back up here. Let's make a couple of new modules here. Module, and we'll call this one shot. We're gonna do echo out. A, uh, oh no, we need to do type equals custom script. And then we want to echo out the uh, icon that we wanna use. I do have an icon here that I think will work nicely. This one right here. And then I'm gonna do click left. And I'm gonna do the command to just do a screenshot. Um, so if you're also using flame screenshot, you can do a uh, flame shot, sorry. You can do flame shot screen, and that will take a screenshot of whatever screen you click the icon on. And then if you do dash P, you can tell it where to save. And I'm just gonna put it in downloads. Okay, cool. And then I'm also gonna do click uh, right. And I want to um, give it the option to also load the flame shot GUI app. So flame shot GUI. Okay, um, so now if I click the screenshot, it should take a screenshot, it says it did. And then if I right click, it should open up the GUI where I can like highlight a specific part of a screen, which is awesome. Uh, I guess we could uh, open up PC Man FM or something, open up a file manager and make sure it actually did save the screenshot, uh, which, yep, it looks like it did. Maybe I'll just take that uh, triangle icon again and maybe I'll just put it in there, see how that looks. That's kind of cool. Now let's go ahead and create the wallpaper module. So one more time, module slash wallpaper, and I'm gonna do type equals custom slash script. One more time, Isaac equals echo, all that nonsense. I do have an icon again. Let me grab it real quick. Go ahead and paste that in. And then we're gonna have two things here. We're gonna have a click left and a uh, click right. And then I also wanna do a click middle, and I'm not actually sure if it'll work, but actually let me just go ahead and do one. So we'll do click left is gonna be Faye, BG fill, randomizer, uh, and then we're gonna do slash media, slash wallpaper, slash um, left click should be maller. Okay, and then I'm just gonna make two copies here and we'll do one will be right and one will be middle. I know the left and the right work, but I'm not sure if the middle will. So we'll change one to 2020 and one to 2021. These are just my wallpaper directories. The names are useless. Okay, so we've got an icon, and now if I click it, new wallpaper, right click, sets it from a different directory, and then the middle click, hey, the middle click works too. Heck yeah, that's awesome. That's exactly how I wanted that to work. Cool, I'm glad that worked out. I was, I had no idea whether or not it would. I was trying to think if there was any anything else I wanted to do. I think, uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, this is, uh, I've made a good number of changes here to my setup and uh, I'm liking them a lot. So, uh, hey, thanks for watching everybody. If you need a VPN, check out Pure VPN. Still got the affiliate deal. I might as well try to make some money off of it before I get kicked out of it. Uh, but that's it. Thanks for watching everybody. See you in the next video.